Hello YouTube gang, it's Joseph Berry here with a final episode tutorial slash thank you message before the end of the year and what a year it has been. It's been amazing um, to you know keep supplying these videos to you guys, the work that I've been creating, I've been extremely busy, busy lately um, and I just wanted to kind of say you know a massive thanks to all of you guys that have subscribed to the channel. Um, that are continued uh, supporting my work um, and just the lovely and the nice feedback and comments that you guys keep giving me it really does spur me on to want to do more hence why I'm here today to set 2019 off with a bang and begin 2019 with a spring in our step and I've created these five unique text effects and these were all inspired by Tween Max and I was thinking about Tween Max and, and th there's a level of learning that needs to be done. Um, you have to learn the, the Tween Max library, JS, whatever comes with that to, to be able to create these amazing text, fix, uh, text effects. And I sat there and thought, is these possible inside a Webflow? And over the few recent projects, I've, I've started to build out these, um, these, these text effects. So I've put together five unique text effects for you guys to be able to clone this project, use them, um, and then you know, put them in your own projects. Now, this video is just gonna explain how I put them together and how you can update them and change them and tweak them. And I've created this, this kind of landing page which has more than just the text effects. There's some nice load interactions and a few other little bits and pieces there that you can have a little look at and see how you could use that going forward. So, jumping straight into the five, we start off with London. This is this really nice kind of swippy, I don't know, up and down movement. It works really nice, and I used this on my Honda site that I just recently did. So this is exclusively new. Paris, Viva la France. Again, really nice, really nice with the fades as well. Gives it a little bit of jazz, that's what we want. Everyone wants a bit of jazz. Pop that. Pew. Love that as well. The Slad Mother, which is Malmo. Love that as well. I think that's really cool. And then Tokyo. Spin that. Pew. So we have five unique text effects there, and I'm going to run you through them all now. So jumping into Webflow. Now, what we have to get into thinking about the logic here is really understanding what we're doing because we are creating individual animations for each letter we need to be able to control that and that is basically what tween max does with the js now what it will do is when you create a word it will individually wrap each one of them words in a span and you can't really do that on Webflow, so there's a little bit of a work around here. So if we just take a look at this first one, now most of these are built up exactly the same. So once you build this out and you create this, then it's going to be quite easy to change, adapt, tweak, do whatever you like. So the basis of this is we have a text wrap, and this text wrap is basically just holding all of these letter wraps. So we have the text wrap, as you can see, it's on uh, flex, and it's pretty much standard like that. And then inside, we've dropped in individual divs. Now, as you can see, there's individual divs all here, which are basically are divs that are holding each letter. And that is how we can start to control these letters, because we're, we're, we're doing this um, by separating them, and then we can then control these. And then in each, each one, we have two letters. Now this does become a little bit tricky. I wouldn't say too much tricky, but anyway. Um, what we've got inside of here is we've got a class of the letter. And as you can see, we've got the chain, see? L1, LO2, LO3, LO4, LO5. LO6, so on and so on. So if you wanted to add more, you need to create unique classes for each of these because you're going to be triggering, triggering each of these individually. And what we want to make sure is that if I go and copy this onto another page and, and start changing around and moving things, that it's, it's going to work on other pages. So we, we make sure that we hard lock that interaction in with that class. And that will really help us be able to just chuck this on any page 
without it breaking. And inside each letter wrap, we have the standard letter. So we think we've got two letters that are moving kind of like that inside of this. And this letter wrap has got an overflow hidden, which obviously hides the text going in and out of that area. And then we have an, a, a normal one, which is just your normal text. It's just relative. Um, and don't forget as well, make sure that you, you put that letter wrap on relative as well. And then inside we have one that is just relative and then we have the other one that is absolute position. And, that, and it's just pinned to the top. So basically at the moment they're sitting like that. They're on top of each other. And that's what we want. We want them one to be on top of the other and not affecting the, the, the position of the other one. Now if I actually take that off, absolute and put it on relative there you go now you can see that one's jumped down like that and we don't want that what we want is we want them to both be on top of themselves with the letter wrap being overflow hidden that means when we move it we won't see it now going into the interaction and we go into the hover and we open the hover out so as you can see here we've just got a, a range so as you can see move is just set to the first one we want that to stay in that position and then the absolute position is the one that's going to be moved down. So as you can see, it's moved right down here. And then as you would have guessed it, as the rollover, AP moves to the middle and the first one moves top. And as you can see, that one goes up. So that's all that is. It's just a movement of the letters. But we need that second letter in there to create that kind of, I don't know, ticker wheel effect. And that's how we create it. And then just as a, another note, there's something here that I really, really want to stress with is, is pushing animation types, um, looking at the animation types, really playing around with them, trying different ones. Don't stick to the ease. Try something different. Look at the movement. Look how it, it moves. See what movement. Play around with the speedings. Remember, that's really important to craft in these animations. So that's kind of the principle of how these are built. So say, for instance, I you know had a letter that was more than six words so the the simplest way to do that would be would cr copy this paste that we'd have to go in change this duplicate it call it seven same again get rid of that and call it seven so that's why it's now set up really easy so you just need to copy change your classes we go back into that animation and if we look what we've got here, simplest way, we, we know we need to copy two of these. So I'm going to copy the low six and the low six AP, duplicate. We've got them both there. We need to relink that one to that one. We need to relink that one to that one. And then we need to make sure that we drop them onto the initial state. And then we just need to do exactly the same for this end one. Duplicate, change target. You've got to make sure they're on the right ones because obviously the movement will be wrong if you do get that. And then we just want to put that on there and then we want to change that to 0.3. And that is how it works. Obviously you'd have to do the rollout interaction and that would be exactly the same. Just the timings reversed around. And again, I'll just quickly show you that so you can see. Again here, see, it starts from six because six is the first letter that needs to go back. And again, we've gone back down to the lowest number. And that's how you create that and that's how you change it and update it. So it's pretty straightforward. And then going into potentially maybe another one. So this one here, same principle again. This text wrap has got no overflow hidden because we want to see that text pop outside. If we go back to the Paris one, Again, you can see that outside, and that just creates a completely different effect. And this one's got this one's got a combination of effects, so it's got a move as well as an opacity. And I really, really want to kind of stress how further you can push an animation with combinations, uh, an opacity, a move, a scale, uh, a skew, um, a size, a whatever just play around and, and try and do combinations i find combination animations work really well um, and then it's about fine tuning them um fine tuning them uh, animation types the speeds the curves 
just play, 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 play. It's really important that you do. Um, and then let's see Berlin. See Berlin again was was completely similar, but quite different in terms of how that worked. Again, it's it's just it's just one in there. It's just one, and then all we're doing with that one is if we go in here this is just a hover so when you hover out it, it just re-triggers it again so it's not it hasn't got a hover hover in and a hover out state it's just a hover over state and 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 all i've done is a scale on each letter and it just created a really nice effect and that's pretty much it it's pretty straightforward hopefully guys will understand what i've spoke about hopefully it's giving you some help to create some more text effects. I'd, I'd be really keen to see what other people can create. And hopefully this is planted the seed for you guys to start putting these into your project in 2020. And to final finish you up with, I'd just like to say it again, thank you ever so much um, for all your support. Um, and don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. I'm gonna be producing a lot more content for you guys. Don't forget, if you like the video, just hit that thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you on the other side.